Terry and I are staying by uh, Truth or Consequences, New Mexico at Elephant Butte State Park. And it's a great place for us. It's, we've got a nice view of the lake and the desert's pretty around here. It's a good place to wait for winter to warm up a little bit as we wander back north. While we were here though, I wanted to check out an area just to the east of us uh, where the uh, El Camino Trail, one of the El Camino Trails ran from Mexico City well up into the northern New Mexico and I knew that they had laid railroad tracks along that trail that went from El Paso to Belen and basically it tied the Santa Fe tracks into the Santa Fe mainline from El Paso up to the mainline. So I kind of wanted to see what they look like, what was there now, and, it, and it's not a heavily trafficked rail line. But luckily for me, when I went over to see it, it's in an area that uh, is known as uh, Hornada del Muerto which basically means journey of death. <laughs> and the reason is because it's desert and it's dry and it's a long ways uh, between, you know, places of respite, so to speak, uh, in the old days. And so it was uh, famous for people not making the journey uh, successfully. And that's where it got its, got its name. I think in particular it came back to one guy, but... Uh, anyway, I went over there to check this place out, and as luck would have it, just as I pulled up, here comes a train, and at the intersection of an end of Highway 51, where the train tracks are, is a siding, and the train came to a stop there. So I'm thinking to myself, hey, this is really cool, because now there will be a train coming the other way, and... I can wait for it and it'll have to stop because what happens is that when a train is on a siding, uh, the other train has to come around it and the tracks have to be changed, the position of the tracking changed to let one train go around the other and back onto the, the line that they are basically sharing. So I thought this would be great because the train's going to come around, it's going to stop up near the switch, and I can talk to the train crew a little bit and get pictures of them making the switch change and all of that. So I sat there, and I, I noticed that this thing was a little different in that uh, it has a hydraulic tank associated with it, but none of the stuff along here is automatic. So um, I checked it out, got the camera and everything set up, and pretty soon uh, here came the train coming the other way. And so as I'm watching it get closer and closer, I realize that there's no way this thing's going to stop. And I can see that the tracks are still in the position to let the other train go, not the one coming at me and it just keeps rolling right along and doesn't stop and what happens is that unbeknownst to me there's a type of switch used in some parts of the railroads that they call a spring switch and the train basically pushes the track into the position it needs it to be and just keeps right on going <laughs> So I'm watching this train come at me thinking this thing's going to derail, you know, and of course that wasn't what happened. It blew through that switch and kept right on going. Once it, the last car passed, the switch returned to its normal position and the light turned green. While the train was going through it, the light was red on the, on the signal tower. Anyway, you learn something new every day.